Hello, and welcome to KLM Institute. Today, we have a fascinating tale about an iconic Indian brand, Campa Cola. It's a story of rise, fall, and a big comeback, all tied together with the power of business strategy and ambition. Let's dive in and discover how Campa Cola went from being a favorite drink to nearly disappearing, and how Mukesh Ambani brought it back into the spotlight in 2022. Campa Cola started in the 1970s and was one of the first major soft drink brands in India. Back then, it had a strong presence in the market and was loved by many. In fact, it was one of the few options available for soft drinks in the country, so it enjoyed a kind of monopoly. Now, what does monopoly mean? Simply put, monopoly is when one company dominates a particular market or industry without facing much competition. A good example of this is the Indian Railways. As of 2024, there is no Tata Railway, Bada Railway, or Reliance Railway, it's all controlled by the Indian government, which means there's no competition in this sector. Similarly, in the 1970s, Campa Cola was one of the few soft drink brands in India, and people didn't have much choice other than to buy it, making it the market leader. But that changed drastically in the 1990s, when the Indian market was opened up to global competition. In 1991, India underwent a significant economic reform, known as the LPG reforms. This stands for liberalization, privatization, and globalization. Let's break down what each of these terms means and how they reshaped India's economy. 1. Liberalization L. Liberalization refers to the process of easing government restrictions and allowing greater freedom in the economy. Before the 1990s, India had a highly controlled economy with strict regulations on business and trade. There were limits on imports, foreign companies had to meet strict regulations to enter the market, and there were significant barriers to private enterprise. However, with liberalization, the Indian government reduced these restrictions to open up the economy to foreign competition. Example, the Indian government removed import restrictions and reduced tariffs, which allowed foreign brands like Coca-Cola and Pepsi to enter the market. These companies brought with them advanced technology, global business practices, and massive advertising budgets, which gave them a competitive edge over local brands like Campa Cola. 2. Privatization P. Privatization refers to the process of transferring the ownership of government-run businesses to private companies or individuals. Before 1991, India had many state-owned enterprises, such as Air India, Indian Railways, and several public sector banks. These enterprises were often inefficient and underperforming due to lack of competition and poor management. Privatization aimed to increase efficiency by allowing the private sector to take over. Example, the privatization of certain sectors, such as telecommunications, led to the rise of private companies like Bharti Airtel and Reliance Communications, which offered better services and innovation compared to the state-owned BSNL. 3. Globalization G. Globalization refers to the increasing interconnectedness of countries and economies, driven by the growth of international trade, investment, and information technology. It means that businesses can operate across borders, and countries can trade more freely with each other. Globalization has led to the rise of multinational corporations and the spread of global products and services to new markets. Example, Coca-Cola and Pepsi, two of the largest soft drink companies globally, entered the Indian market after the liberalization reforms. They brought with them global marketing strategies, large-scale production capabilities, and distribution networks that allowed them to dominate the Indian market and push local competitors like Campa Cola out. With deep pockets and massive advertising budgets, Coca-Cola and Pepsi quickly dominated the market. They spent huge sums on advertising, promotions, and getting their products into every corner of India. In fact, Coca-Cola and Pepsi reportedly spent over 100 crore rupees on advertising in the 1990s alone. That was a huge amount at the time, 
and it gave them a massive advantage over local competitors like Campicola, who simply couldn't match that scale. Here's a breakdown of the massive budgets Coca-Cola and Pepsi used for advertising. 1. Coca-Cola's Advertising Budget Over the years, Coca-Cola has spent an average of $4 billion per year on advertising worldwide, excluding the year 2020, when they spent about $2.8 billion. In 2023, Coca-Cola's advertising spending surged to an even higher $5 billion, as per a Statista report. Their marketing strategy focused heavily on television campaigns, billboards, celebrity endorsements, and event sponsorships. Coca-Cola famously invested in large-scale campaigns like Coca-Cola, The Real Thing, and Fandom Madlab Coca-Cola, reaching millions of Indian consumers through a mix of traditional media and grassroots engagement. 2. Pepsi's Advertising Budget According to a Statista report, PepsiCo spent a significant $3.8 billion on advertising in 2023, including media and personal service prepayments, promotional materials, and production costs of future advertising. Pepsi invested heavily in television ads, print media, and high-profile celebrity endorsements. One of the iconic campaigns included the Pepsi Generation ad featuring famous Bollywood stars and cricketers, which helped it appeal to young, aspirational Indians. Both Coca-Cola and Pepsi's massive advertising budgets allowed them to not only reach a wide audience but also to establish a strong emotional connection with consumers through catchy slogans, celebrity endorsements, and high-profile marketing campaigns. Campicola, on the other hand, struggled to keep up. While it had its loyal customers, it didn't have the financial power to compete with the global giants. Coca-Cola and Pepsi also had much larger distribution networks, which made it easier for them to get their products to every store in the country. Slowly, but surely, Campa-Cola began losing customers as people shifted to the newer, more widely available, and heavily advertised international brands. However, Campa-Cola had its own charm, especially in the 1980s, when it became a favorite among the youth. The brand was heavily advertised as cool and fun, and one of its most memorable campaigns featured a young Salman Khan. In 1982, filmmaker Kalash Surendranath was tasked with creating an ad for Campicola. A memorable underwater shoot featured a young Salman Khan, who was cast after impressing the team with his swimming skills during a casual visit to a club. Little did anyone know that this ad would help launch Khan's career in the limelight. By the early 2000s, Campicola was virtually wiped out of the market. It had failed to adapt to the changing market dynamics, and the brand faded into obscurity. But here's where the story takes a surprising twist. Fast forward to 2022, when Mukesh Ambani, the chairman of Reliance Industries, surprised everyone by buying the iconic Campicola brand. Now, you might be wondering, why would Ambani invest in a company that had been losing money for years? The answer lies in his vision for the future. Mukesh Ambani is known for his strategic thinking, and he saw an opportunity to bring back the nostalgic brand that many Indians remembered fondly. Ambani and Reliance made the bold move of relaunching Campa Cola in 2022, hoping to tap into the growing demand for local and nostalgic products. They saw that there was a market for alternatives to Coca-Cola and Pepsi, especially with the rise of Indian-made products gaining popularity. By acquiring Campa-Cola, Ambani was able to leverage the brand's legacy while also focusing on revitalizing it for a new generation of consumers. So, what's Campa-Cola doing to re-establish itself in the market? Ambani's team has invested heavily in revamping the brand's image, product packaging, and distribution network. While Campicola doesn't have the same massive advertising budget as Coca-Cola or Pepsi, Reliance has been focusing on innovative ways to promote it. They've used a combination of traditional advertising and digital marketing, connecting with younger audiences on social media platforms like Instagram and YouTube. 
They've also capitalized on the, make in India, sentiment, which resonates with many Indians who are proud of local products. Now, will Campa Cola be able to regain its former glory? The road ahead is not easy, but it's not impossible either. Mukesh Ambani's deep pockets, business acumen, and understanding of the Indian market give Campa Cola a fighting chance. With the right marketing strategies, modern branding, and a strong distribution network, the brand could certainly make a comeback. But it will take time. Campa Cola has a lot of catching up to do if it wants to challenge the dominance of Coca Cola and Pepsi. The next few years will be critical in determining whether it can regain its customers and build a loyal fan base once again. Rise and fall of Campa Cola is a story of how a local brand was overtaken by global giants but now, thanks to Mukesh Ambani, it is trying to reclaim its place in the hearts of Indians. We'll have to wait and see if the Campa of the past can once again make a splash in the Indian market. That's all for today's story from KLM Institute. What do you think about the return of Campa Cola? Do you think it can give Coca-Cola and Pepsi a run for their money? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting updates. See you next time.